Hello everyone, welcome to my channel BioZ and today we are going to discuss all these close related terms and see how they are actually different from each other. So let us begin. The very first term that we are going to talk about today is Parthenocarpy. So let us write Parthenocarpy. Alright, now this Parthenocarpy words include something known as Carpy. Carpy? Carpic, it means fruit. Carpi literally means fruit. So it is, it is the process of Parthenocarpi. It is a process of fruit formation without fertilization. Without fertilization. Generally, the fruit is the product of fertilization after fertilization the ovary gets converted into fruit but here the fruit is forming without fertilization and since the fruit is forming without fertilization such fruits would be seedless fruits they would be seedless fruits as seeds are formed from the ovule after fertilization but here no fertilization is happening and uh, the, that is why the fruit would be seedless example we have in the market nowadays seedless cucumber. All right, we have grapes, watermelon. Even we have papaya. Right, so these are the example of parthenocarpic fruit. Fruits that are formed without fertilization. Now, one relatable term is parthenogenesis. Right, parthenogenesis. So, we write here parthenogenesis. Now, if we talk about this parthenogenesis, parthenogenesis is basically embryo formation, embryo formation without fertilization. Directly, the embryo is forming without fertilization and this process of parthenogenesis is the one that is quite similar to that is quite similar to a process in the plant that is apomixis so here it is apomixis now let us understand what is this apomixis here so apomixis means seed formation seed formation without fertilization without fertilization now seeds is there and within the seed the embryo is there so that is why these two terms are relatable embryo formation without fertilization and seed formation without fertilization okay now since the seeds are forming here without fertilization so the characters are not going to segregate right because the characters are not coming from two parents and further also directly from one single parent the seed is going to form so meiosis is not happening so characters won't segregate and since since characters won't segregate here character won't segregate here what is going to happen it helps very important point here helps maintaining hybrid vigor or heterosis what is heterosis it is basically superiority of offspring over the parents character so basically let's say uh, you get a plant with all the good characters from different different plants so that uh, plant is now a hybrid of various characters various desirable character right so that is a hybrid plant with all the good characters now you don't want to lose those character if it is going to form gamete and segregate all the characters will also segregate 
so you don't want you want to go on with this plant keep on forming more and more like this so in that case apomixis is going to help because here the seed are going to form with just from single parent without fertilization so the characters will remain as it is and the characters won't segregate so it helps maintaining the hybrid vigor apomixis and since apomixis is the one where the seeds are, uh, are forming but without fertilization that is why here we can say that apomixis apomixis kind of mimics sexual reproduction because the seeds are forming but without fertilization so it mimics sexual reproduction now there are various things that are included in the apomixis we are going to talk about that but before talking um, going to talk about those all those things you need to understand few terms the very first term is apogamy here apogamy so we know in the plants there is alternation of generation happen the gametophyte gets converted into sporophyte and sporophyte again get forms a gametophyte right so we can write here gametophyte gametophyte by the process of syngamy over gametophyte the gametes are going to form and they fuse together through the process of syngamy fertilization and a diploid sporophyte forms in general it happens in the plant right but here when the gametophyte is getting converted into sporophyte there is no syngamy it is directly getting converted into sporophyte so gametophyte proid is uh haploid and since there is no syngamy happening so sporophyte also remain haploid sporophyte remains haploid so what is the trick to remember how you are going to remember here it is apogamy gametophyte generally in general always is haploid so here in both the cases you can say gametophyte as well as sporophyte is haploid because it is apogamy so gametophyte and sporophyte both will be haploid this is apogamy now the close related term is another term is apospore apospore so again what happens gametophyte is forms sporophyte in general and this is sporophyte with the process of with the process of meiosis form haploid gametophyte right but here when sporophyte get, is getting converted into gametophyte gametophyte it is not going and un, undergoing the process of meiosis so here the sporophyte that is diploid in general is directly getting converted into gametophyte so it will also will remain diploid it has generally gametophyte is haploid but in this case a uh, diploid gametophyte is forming so here it is apospore sporophytic uh ploidy level is generally diploid so here in both the cases you can say diploid diploid things are coming so this is apospore okay now one more relatable term is a gamo spermy now let us just break down this term a little bit a means absent here gamo means fusion means absence of fusion but still spermy spermatophyte means seed seed formation is still happening so the process of seed formation but without undergoing any fusion of gamete that is what is known as a gamospermy so we have discussed here three points apogamy apospore and a gamospermy we are going to discuss this term now in apomixis to understand the types of apomixis okay so let us go back to the apomixis apomixis was seed formation without fertilization all right so let's see the types of apomixis so apomixis the very first one that we are going to study it is recurrent gamospermy recurrent Agamospermy. So, what is recurrent agamospermy? 
what happens here diploid nucellar cell diploid nucellus or maybe a diploid megaspore mother cell mmc it is directly getting converted into egg so it would be a diploid egg and since here also diploid here also diploid both at both the end there is diploid condition so this process would be as we have just discussed it is going to be diploid diploid condition here diploid diploid condition here so it is apospore apospore so with the process of apospore diploid nucellar cell or diploid megaspore mother cell directly is getting converted into diploid egg now once this diploid egg has formed this is going to be get converted into a diploid embryo diploid embryo so it is embryo formation without fertilization as you can see embryo formation without fertilization here right so it is the process of parthenogenesis it is a process of parthenogenesis so with the process of parthenogenesis the diploid egg is getting converted into diploid embryo directly now these this embryo it will be in the present uh, it will be present in the seed of course so this embryo is the one that is going to produce viable seed these seeds will be viable a viable plant they will be able to uh, form the new plants okay now this diploid embryo diploid embryo is going to form embryo sac the embryo is present within the embryo sac only so the embryo sac will also be diploid but in general embryo sac that are found in the angiospermic uh, families it is haploid if you remember all the cells of the embryo sac they all are haploid they all are haploid right but this is a diploid embryo sac that is why when diploid embryo gets converted and form a diploid embryo sac so this process is known as diplospore diplospore and it is the characteristic feature or you can say it is something specific to not characteristic feature it is something specific to angiosperm it will be fi found only in angiosperm if it is if it is happening it will be found only in angiosperm not other parts of the plants plant kingdom okay so this is about recurrent agamospermy agamospermy without seed formation or oh sorry without uh, fusion of uh, without fusion of gametes the seed formation is happening so here the embryo of course would be present in the seed only so seeds are forming without any fusion of gamete recurrent agamospermy then there is another one that is that is non recurrent non recurrent agamospermy non recurrent agamospermy so here what is happening the haploid egg egg is haploid only it is directly getting converted into embryo so now the embryo would be haploid and the process would be parthenogenesis of course parthenogenesis so a haploid egg is directly getting converted into haploid embryo and since the haploid embryo is forming this will not be able to form a new plant because we need required diploid tissue to form the whole plant right so that is why the seeds that are formed here they will be non viable seeds non viable seeds using these seeds we cannot produce new plant example here the example would be banana and here the example would be you can mention the example here it is alium apple and pear just remember up right trick is up alium apple pear it is non recurrent for non recurrent it is banana all right now there is third thing that is polyembryonic 
because under polyembryony we need to study adventive polyembryony which is a part of apomixis only so first let us understand what exactly is this polyembryony polyembryony is basically many poly means many embryony means embryo so many embryo are going to form generally one embryo forms but here many embryos are going to form so how it is going to happen if the diploid nucellus diploid nucellar cells or the cells of the integument which are also diploid what are these cells if i have to draw a quick view structure so these cells would be nucellar cell and this is the integument right so these cells are the one if they are directly getting converted into embryo let's say here 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 one cell then here 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 so all these cells are getting converted into embryo so of course they are going to be more than one embryo more than one and that condition is known as poly embryony poly embryony more than one embryo okay first adventive poly embryony and another one we have is cleavage polyembryony so uh, this if uh, the polyembryony is happening because of because of diploid nucellar tissue and diploid integument getting converted into diploid embryo this is what is known as adventive polyembryony and the example of this is com that is citrus apensia and mango okay and in the case of cleavage polyembryony what happens this is not the part of however is not the part of uh, apomixis so here what happens the zygote the zygote it divides it break down and it divide into many parts and each part will form embryo so there are going to be many embryo poly embryony this happens in uh, nicotiana all right and even it is reported in gymnosperm gymnosperms like we have in pinus sidrus all right so i hope this answer your query about all these related terms and uh, keep sharing my videos keep liking and uh, please hit the subscribe button and uh, if you have any query regarding any doubt you can comment in the comment section and i will take it and make a video on it so see you the next time bye